In mid-May, the crypto market saw a massive crash of more than 50%. In the weeks that followed, it looked like the bull market was officially over. Then, at the end of June, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey announced the B-Word event, which would take place on July 21st and seek to inspire institutions to invest in Bitcoin. This news went mostly unnoticed by retail investors who were thoroughly wrecked, and the crypto market continued to crumble. Then the B-word event happened, and the crypto market magically reversed on July 21st. Many altcoins have seen new all-time highs since then, and Bitcoin seems to be on the brink of an all-time high of its own. With all the bullish events and developments on the horizon for crypto, you might feel like this outcome is guaranteed. However, for every one of these possible white swan events, there is an equal number of possible black swan events, which could send the crypto market back down to unfathomable depths. Today, I'm going to tell you about some of the most bullish and bearish events and developments around the corner for crypto and what they could mean for the crypto market. I know it sounds lame, but there's a disclaimer I need to declaim. Financial advice is not something you'll find here, but if you're looking for education and entertainment, come near. Welcome all, whether friend or foe. My name is Guy and my muse is crypto. The Coin Bureau contains some of the highest quality crypto content on the tube. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, market moves, technical analysis and tutorials too. Whether you're an expert or just a beginner, subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell will help turn you into a winner. If you direct your gaze to the timeline below, you'll notice I've left timestamps you can use to surf today's crypto flow. It would be wonderful if you watched the whole way through because it'll help both me and you. So now that you're ready to rumble, let's see what could cause the crypto market to rise and what could cause it to tumble. I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, and that's the infrastructure bill. To quickly recap, the infrastructure bill seeks to allocate over 1 trillion taxpayer dollars to build roads and bridges, along with a bunch of other things that are completely unrelated to infrastructure. Part of the infrastructure bill requires loosely defined cryptocurrency brokers to collect KYC from all their users for tax purposes. This clause was apparently slipped into the infrastructure bill at the last minute by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who's not a fan of crypto, to say the least. Although the Treasury Department has noted that cryptocurrency miners, validators and wallet developers won't be required to abide by this tax reporting rule, we won't know for sure until the rubber hits the road. And that makes the infrastructure bill a potential black swan for the crypto market. The infrastructure bill is currently in its final stages of approval, so the question is not if, but when this controversial clause will come into play, and what could happen as a result. According to The Hill, US politicians are looking to pass the infrastructure bill no later than October the 1st. Now, it's worth pointing out that it won't happen sooner than September the 20th either, because US politicians have their recess until that date. This means the infrastructure bill will likely be passed in the last two weeks of September, at which point it just needs to be signed by the president to become law. It's anyone's guess as to what could happen after that, but given that cryptocurrency brokers such as cryptocurrency exchanges already collect KYC, this suggests regulators will pursue DeFi projects. This is because the definition of a broker is, quote, any service effectuating transfers of digital assets on behalf of other persons. And that's what DeFi does in the eyes of outdated lawmakers. Even though it's impossible for DeFi protocols to abide by these regulations, the centralized gateways you use to access them and the companies which created those gateways will likely be forced to collect KYC for any US users. This includes projects like Uniswap, Aave, and Compound. Now, this could do some damage to DeFi tokens in the short term, but it's a blow that will be easily absorbed by larger DeFi projects, which are already seeing an insane amount of institutional adoption. However, if regulators start arbitrarily applying this reporting requirement to other cryptocurrency projects, this uncertainty could create a lot of fear in the crypto market, since nobody will know which project is next on the chopping block. 
Something similar could happen because of another black swan event, and that's the SEC's clampdown on cryptocurrency, which I covered in depth in another video you can find up there in the top right. To give you the TLDR on that one, the SEC is targeting almost every other cryptocurrency besides Bitcoin. This is because most cryptocurrencies fall under the archaic definition of a security. To translate that into plain English, most cryptocurrencies are more like stocks than currencies, meaning people are investing in them and expecting profits because of what the companies that create them are doing. Selling an asset with this sort of setup requires registering with the SEC, which very few cryptocurrency projects have done. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler has been itching to go after these crypto projects in the name of investor protection, and the only thing stopping him is resources and the authority to use those resources. Gary has been pressing politicians to give the SEC the power to do just that, but they seem to be a bit tied up with the recess and those two multi-trillion dollar spending packages at the moment. Once that's all been dealt with, though, I believe the next order of business will be to grant Gary's wishes and set the SEC loose on a crypto killing spree. This means we could see the SEC clamp down on cryptocurrency in early or mid-October. Now that said, it's worth pointing out that this power could be granted at any point after politicians return on September 20th. This timeline is ultimately dependent on the absence of other politically pressing matters. In terms of which cryptocurrencies the SEC is likely to target, the prime candidates are again DeFi projects. This is because DeFi protocols offer many of these unregistered security tokens. So this means that in addition to collecting KYC on their users, DeFi protocols like Uniswap, Aave, Compound, et al. will have to register with the SEC as well if they want to continue to operate in the land of the free. Not only that, but the SEC considers some stablecoins to be securities too. This is because most of them are backed by government and corporate debt, which you'll know if you watch my video about it. And since government and corporate bonds are types of securities, this makes stablecoins like PAX, BUSD, USDC, and especially USDT securities in the eyes of the SEC. USDC issuer Circle has been pivoting like mad so as not to get caught in the incoming crossfire, but I have a feeling that no stablecoin issuers will be safe once the SEC goes hunting. Tether will likely be the first issuer to get a knock on the door, and I could see the SEC demanding that Circle and Paxos freeze any tokens in wallets without KYC or else be subject to enormous fines. I don't think I have to explain how disastrous that would be for cryptocurrency. Something like this would really make mid-May feel like a walk in the park. Now, on the bright side, the SEC stablecoin clampdown probably won't happen overnight, but it's something that is coming, and therefore, something to keep in mind. Another thing that's coming is a crash across the board, and it's something that stock market experts have been warning about for weeks now. In case you didn't know, this would also be devastating for crypto. In contrast to casual stock market crash narratives, this one is a lot more believable, given that it's clearly visible on every major stock's recent price history. What comes up must come down eventually. Now, nobody knows for sure when this crash will occur or what big black swan event will cause it, but there are two contenders to consider. Now, I must be careful about how I talk about the first big black swan, so all I'll say is that it starts with a C and ends with the number that you get when you subtract 1 from 20. If a new version of this phenomenon were to catch the headlines in the coming months, we could see a repeat of what happened in March last year as the world shuts down yet again. If you don't remember what happened in March last year, allow me to refresh your memory. Now, the second big black swan is the one I covered in my recent weekly crypto review, and that's the Federal Reserve reducing its government bond purchases. Without getting into the weeds, if the Fed does this, it will increase the interest rates that people need to pay on debt in the United States. Because people have been borrowing so much money, be it to invest or just to get by, a marginal increase in interest rates could make it difficult for most people to make their monthly payments on that debt. This includes the US government, which has likewise racked up record levels of debt, 
and most investors believe that the Fed will not reduce its bond purchases because of the government's own risk of defaulting. I, for one, however, am not so convinced. And that's because this relentless bond buying is creating all the money that's causing all the inflation, which is sure to go super cyan if this continues. While the Fed may not care too much about the average consumer, it definitely cares about the dollar being the world's reserve currency. If confidence in the dollar starts to collapse and hyperinflation comes to the fore, foreign governments and corporations won't be any more willing to hold dollars than the individuals and institutions back home. Luckily, all the Fed needs to do to protect the dollar's reserve status is to increase the demand for USD by increasing interest rates. This could mean people sell out of riskier assets and move back into higher yielding dollar debt. It's brilliant, really, and it's what the USD chart is showing, too, with the increasing strength of the dollar. Then again, the Fed might have no choice but to continue or even accelerate its asset purchases if that first big black swan comes around. Now, the funny thing about both of these big black swans is that they are likely to occur in or around the same time as the others I've mentioned so far in this video. The former tends to reveal itself in the fall, which starts in late September, and the latter could be revealed during the Federal Reserve's press conference scheduled for September 22nd. All right, all right, that's enough with the FUD. Let's get into the FOMO, because there are a lot of white swans coming up for crypto too. For your information, white swan isn't actually a thing in investing. It's just how I describe known and unknown events and developments that could catapult cryptocurrencies to new all-time highs. Anyways, the first white swans involve the acceptance of cryptocurrency payments by some of the largest companies in the world. Some of you may remember that Tesla CEO Elon Musk tweeted that Tesla would once again begin accepting BTC as payment for its EVs once Bitcoin mining became green enough. In case you missed the memo, Tesla's initial cancellation of BTC payments over environmental concerns was one of the contributing factors to the crash in mid-May. Now that more than 50% of all Bitcoin mining is done using renewable energy, Tesla will, quote, most likely begin accepting BTC again, as per Elon's comments during the B-word event I mentioned in the introduction. Like the B-word event announcement in June, the possibility that Tesla could reverse course on BTC payments has seemingly fallen down the memory hole of most retail investors. When this announcement inevitably comes, it's likely that other companies will follow suit. One of them is Apple, which was looking to hire an alternative payments manager at the end of May, which, of course, includes cryptocurrency payments. In what must be another total coincidence, Amazon also announced that it was exploring cryptocurrency payments just two days after the B-word event. Hmm. More recently, Walmart revealed that it too was looking for someone to help with its digital currency payment strategy, which once again includes cryptocurrencies. Another wildcard that could be thrown into the mix is PayPal's upcoming, quote, crypto super app, which could potentially support contactless point-of-sale payments with cryptocurrency. Now, if you're wondering when we could see all these fireworks, I can't say for sure, but it's likely that some or even most of these announcements will be made in the coming weeks. If even just one of these companies announces support for cryptocurrency payments, it would be extremely bullish for the crypto market, and it would further validate the legitimacy of the asset class. The only thing more bullish than companies accepting crypto payments is companies holding actual crypto on their balance sheets. As I mentioned in my recent video about that topic, there's no shortage of companies which could be on the cusp of copying some crypto, and every single one of those announcements will be a white swan. One of these happened recently, and that was Coinbase's announcement that it will be purchasing $500 million worth of crypto and allocating 10% of its future profits into its favorite coins and tokens. Now, Coinbase didn't specify exactly which cryptocurrencies it would be buying beyond Bitcoin and Ethereum, but it's looking like it's going to be a much longer list than that. Now, 500 million might be a pretty big buy, but it pales in comparison to what Fidelity's clients are waiting to put into crypto. For those who don't know, Fidelity is one of the largest asset managers in the world, with over $10 trillion in assets under management. 
According to a recent survey they conducted, 90% of their largest clients want exposure to crypto. And I don't mean ETFs or futures or mining company stock. They want the real thing. If even a fraction of that mountain of money moves into the crypto market, the moon would be but a pit stop on the way to the next galaxy. And it's not just companies that are loading up on crypto either. Back in early June, El Salvador became the first country to make BTC legal tender. And there are other countries in Latin America that are trying to do the same. Those of you who watched my video about Bitcoin adoption in Latin America will remember that this is because many Latin American countries rely on the dollar, which has been losing value due to the aforementioned government bond buying, aka money printing. The backlash against El Salvador's decision by the global banking industry has been immense, to say the least. But it's happening, and every bank, insurance broker, and business in El Salvador will need to hold BTC on its balance sheets because of it. This includes the El Salvadoran government itself, which offered up $30 in BTC to every citizen in late June, meaning it had to have bought at least $150 million in BTC around that time. I can't imagine how much BTC buying is going on now. So when will these white swans start to affect the crypto market? Well, in the case of Coinbase, Fidelity, and any other companies considering crypto buys, this information will be released in early to mid-September in their quarterly earnings reports. Coinbase's quarterly report will be the most significant of the bunch because it should reveal the unknown altcoins that Coinbase is investing in. Now, take a second to consider what that could do to the prices of those altcoins, especially if Coinbase takes a sizable position in one or more of them. When it comes to El Salvador, the law which makes BTC legal tender will go into force on September the 7th, which conveniently falls into the same time frame as the other white swans waiting to happen. The last white swans I'll mention today relate to the events and developments in the works for individual cryptocurrencies. One of these is the possibility of a Bitcoin and or an Ethereum ETF, something which I've covered extensively in yet another video that's hanging up there in the top right. If you watched that video, you'll remember that the reason why cryptocurrency ETFs are so significant is because a lot of large investors can't invest in cryptocurrencies directly for regulatory reasons. ETFs are traded on stock exchanges and are typically backed by the assets they represent. In this case, BTC and or ETH. These assets are then bought and sold in accordance with the supply and demand for the ETF in question by the company which offers that ETF. If you've been keeping up with the Coin Bureau, you'll know that SEC Chairman Gary Gensler has expressed interest in passing a Bitcoin ETF that's backed by Bitcoin futures. Now, this sounds bizarre until you realize Gary wants to create new regulations for the cryptocurrency custodians which would hold the BTC backing a pure crypto-backed ETF. In any case, Gary's openness to a futures-backed ETF has resulted in more than half a dozen futures-backed crypto ETF filings in the last few weeks. Given that the SEC has 45 days to approve, reject, or postpone their decision about each of these ETF applications, this once again sets the date range for early to mid-September, late September for some. The exact impact on the price does depend on the type of instruments being approved. If they're purely futures-backed instruments, it's more likely to just be a temporary pump in price. Even though these ETFs won't have the same effect on crypto prices as crypto-backed ETFs, the hype alone could take many coins and tokens to new all-time highs, including BTC and ETH. ADA is one of the few cryptocurrencies that has already pushed past its previous all-time high, and this is because of Cardano's upcoming smart contracts, which will go live on September 12th. DOT could soon do the same, given that Polkadot's parachain slot auctions should be beginning any day now. Even Litecoin could soon rally out of the hole because of the Mimblewimble privacy layer Litecoin developers are currently finalizing. Now, I'm sure there are dozens of other cryptocurrencies with major milestones scheduled for the next month, too. So this brings me to the question that must be on the tip of your tongues. With all these coincidences, does this mean we'll see a market top in mid-September followed by a crash in late September? The short answer is that this seems to be the case, but it doesn't necessarily mean we'll be entering a bear market after that. 
For starters, many of the black swans I mentioned today might not occur in the expected timeframes, and some of them may not even occur at all. Even so, my bias will be bearish around that time, simply because there are so many other macro factors at play that could quickly put an end to the current crypto bull run. Between now and then, there's no shortage of white swans which could take the crypto markets to new all-time highs, and I reckon they have a higher certainty of happening than those black swans. I think if we see a Bitcoin ETF approved, that could in fact mark the top of the current bull market. And I say this because the introduction of the Bitcoin futures on the CME marked the top of the last bull market, at least for BTC. Still, there are many white swans that will happen in the weeks following the possible crash at the end of September or early October. The two that come to mind are Bitcoin's taproot upgrade, which is scheduled for November, and Ethereum's transition to proof of stake, which could come as early as December. Obviously, these developments will be bullish for BTC and ETH, and they could even foreshadow the final run-up, which ends the bull market just like Bitcoin's last upgrade did in 2017. Alternatively, the market could stay down just so institutional investors can gobble up all the ETH and have a majority say in proof of stake or open more centralized Lightning Network payment gateways with BTC. At the end of the day, the crypto market could go either way. These are just a few of the many things that could impact the crypto market in the coming weeks, and I reckon more than one of these had fallen through the cracks for you as they had for me. So now that you're aware, you won't have to be scared. Assess your risks, assess your rewards, come up with a plan and stick to it, because it's possible we're in the final month of this bull market and you can't afford to be emotional anymore. Don't worry, folks, you got this. If you agree, give that like button some love. Better yet, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. While you're at it, drop me a comment about what you think will happen next in the crypto market and why. If you prefer, you can let me know via TikTok, Twitter, or Instagram. If you're struggling to stay up to date with the crypto market, you can fix that by joining my Telegram to get all the daily crypto updates you need. You can even subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get the tools, tips, and tricks that will help you squeeze every sat out of this bull market. If you need to blow off some steam, you need to check out my new Coin Bureau Clips channel for behind the scenes goofs and gaffs. And of course, you can look like a champ by grabbing a hoodie or tee from the Coin Bureau merch store. Not free, but damn comfy. Links to all these resources are lingering in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm off for now, but I'll see you around very soon. Thank you.